الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد يا حبيبي في الله Continuing on in our treaties, our study of Shah Sunnah Imam Baba Hari Rahmatullah Ali. We reach the por portion of the treaties where Imam Baba Hari Rahmatullah Ali mentioned, and this is the 50th, uh, the 50th point. And Imam Baba Hari said, Rahmatullah Ali Qal. وكل ما سمعت من من الأثار شيء مما لم يبلغه عقلك نحو قول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قلوب العباد بين أسبعين من أصابع الرحمن عز وجل وقوله إن الله ينزل إلى السماء الدنيا في ثلث الليل الآخر ثلث ثلث الآخر من الليل وقوله وينزل يوم العرفة وقوله وينزل يوم القيامة وقوله وأن الجهنم لا يزال يطره فيها حتى يدا عليها قدمه جل ثناؤه وقوله وقول الله تعالى للعبد إن مشيت إلي حرولت إليك وقوله خلق الله آدم على صورته وقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رأيت ربي في أحسن صورة وأشبه هذه الأحاديث فعليك بتسليم وتصديق وتفويذ ورضاء ولا تفسر شيء من هذه البهواك فإن الإيمان بهذا واجب فمن فسر شيء من هذا بهواه ورده فهو جهمي ومن زعم أنه يرى ربه في الدار الدنيا فهو كافر بالله عز وجل إيمان بابا هاري رحمة الله عليه said <coughs> in the 50th point he said one must accept affirm and perform tafweed meaning to Abandon dwelling into how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, uh, you know, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat, his characteristics, his divine characteristics are, and uh, dwelling into these narrations from without having the knowledge uh, to do so. Uh, so he says, uh, and perform tafweed, you know, being pleased with those narrations without trying to ask how. Everything in the narrations that one has heard but cannot fully understand, like the saying of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hearts of the servants are between two fingers of the most merciful, the mighty, and majestic. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, indeed Allah descends to the lowest heaven. And his sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, he descends on the day of Arafah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, he descends on the day of resurrection. Meaning all these are referring to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, hellfire, hellfire does not cease having, them throw, having people thrown into it until he, the majestic, places his foot upon it. And the law of the Most High saying to his servant, If you walk towards me, I run towards you. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Allah created Adam in his image. And the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I saw my Lord in the most excellent form. And the like of these ahadith. Do not explain any of them with your feelings or desires. Since believing in them is obligatory, since they're sound, authentic narrations. Anyone who explains anything from them according to his desires or rejects them is a jahmi from the jahmiya. And anyone who claims to have seen his Lord in this world is a disbeliever in Allah, the mighty and majestic. So that's what Imam Baba Hadi said, Rahmatullah with regards to tafweed, the Salaf did not dwell into how the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are. 
The knowledge of that is with Allah alone. As for the Ashadis and others, tafweed to them is that they believe that what is apparent from the attributes is not what is meant. Okay, so they believe that the apparent meaning that you get from the text, when Allah subhanahu wa when the Prophet says, Yanzulu Rabbuna Tabaraka Ta'ala Kudutul al Layl al Akhir, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the last third of the night. That they don't take that apparent meaning, but instead they uh, take the apparent meaning and they distort it. Or they make it so it fits with their intellect. And this is away from the Minhaj and methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, away from the Minhaj and methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah. That this is not the tariqah, the path for understanding who your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is, but rather Ahl Sunnah as the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, they accept the narrations. They accept uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about himself in the Quran and what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about him subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, his authentic narrations, they accept it and have taslim in their hearts. They're comforted. They don't dwell into those matters. <clears throat> they didn't ask how. How does Allah descend? Uh, and it's, you know, 9 o'clock in Seattle. And it's 1 o'clock in the morning in China. And it's, you know, in the afternoon in Saudi Arabia. Or whatever the situation is. They didn't ask these kind of questions. These are the people who came after them. The people who deviated in the religion. Who felt they needed something more. And it didn't, as if to say they didn't suffice with what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with. So Ahl Sunnah uh, accepts those narrations. And they do not dwell into the meanings except for we take the apparent meaning. We accept the apparent meaning of that. We believe that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala descends. We don't know how He descends to the lowest, thir to the last third of the night. And we don't ask and we don't go into those things. That knowledge, Allah has not given us that knowledge. So then therefore it's not for us to take our intellect and to try to deduce uh, something new that makes us feel better or makes us feel more comforted or makes us accept uh, accept those nasus in uh, a better way, but rather we accept them as they were revealed. And to the, to the Asha'id and some of those other uh, sects that deviated with regard to these aspects of creed, to them the ayat about the attributes of Allah are uh, mutashabih. You know, they're uncertain in their meaning or they're ambiguous. And thus they were not known about by the Prophet Wasallam and the companions. This is clearly wrong. Okay? Uh, and there's many... Uh, explanations that uh, you know in depth referring to the how the groups like the Jahmiyyah who uh, practiced Ta'til of the Sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where they negated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, his divine attributes so they would say Allah is a Rahman without Rahmah you know he doesn't have Rahmah so they were trying to uh, because their intellect they didn't want to make a resemblance between Allah and His creation. So therefore, they fleed from making a resemblance to the other extreme of negating. And this is what you find a lot of Ahl Bid'ah. <coughs> they would flee from one type of Bid'ah and innovation to another type of innovation. They would go to one extreme to another. Uh, the the, the, the Khawarij and takfir, Takfiris, they make Takfir the major sins. So then you have the murjia on the other end of the extreme who say, no, whatever sin you commit, it doesn't matter as long as you believe in your heart. Or as long as you have the statement of your tongue. Until you say that you're no longer a, dis, uh, a, no longer a believer, you're still a believer. So they go to one of the other extremes. Whereas the khawarij make takfir of the person who does the major sins. And this is what you find in Ahl Bidah, that they usually go to one extreme or another, and Ahl Sunnah is in, is wasit, is in the middle, accepting Kitab al Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam according to the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. And all of those narrations we accept, and as Imam Babahari said, Rahmatullah 
that whoever rejects them is a jahmi. Whoever explains anything from them according to his desires uh, or rejects them is from the jahmiyyah. Uh, and the jahmiyyah, as we mentioned, they're the denier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, following the way of Jahmi ibn Safwan and his teacher Ja'ad bin Durham, both of whom were executed for their wicked beliefs and heretical teachings. So those that is the sunnah of Ja'ad bin Durham and uh, Jaham ibn Safwan to hold those those beliefs of negating the divine attributes of Allah. But rather Ahl Sunnah accepts the Nasus as they come without going into how and uh, trying to detail something that we have no knowledge about and speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge and the right to do so. And so we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan.